All right, well, let's take a look at our next one here, which comes to us from ZDNet.com. Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.7 arrives. And uh, it's, it's you know, what you've been waiting for, the, the gift uh, for holiday the holiday season here. 8.7 fits, uh, fits right in that red stocking, <laughs> Red Hat. <laughs> Um, so Some what allergies having trouble is yeah. new? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if Santa had the fedora on yeah, instead of the true. other thing, that's that would that'd work a lot better. Uh, what's new in eight point seven that uh, that we should be so excited about? Well, you know, I I actually stopped reporting on minor versions of Red Hat a while back. So, like we didn't report when eight point six came out, or I don't think we did eight point five even, uh, although it was a bit bigger. Uh, but this time in eight point seven, there's a feature that I think is really cool. Red Hat has baked in a little bit more for their identity and access management or, or their authentication piece on the system. So in the past, when you configured RHEL, you had a couple of options for how you authenticated users. You had, you know, maybe you had a centralized directory like OpenLDAP or Microsoft's Active Directory. They supported both. Or you just wanted to use Unix authentication with the built-in user accounts. But with the updates to the, the PAM or pluggable authentication module system in Linux, they could really support whatever they wanted if they chose to do it. Well, in 8.7, they chose. They have at they choose they choose they choose rated they have chosen choose the fight all right well we're gonna learn English today on the podcast <laughs> chewed uh, so they choo choo choosed <laughs> it's got a picture of a train on it <laughs> so uh, they chose to add in support for some really neat systems they've added uh, support for Amazon Web Services IAM. Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and a handful of others. So you can actually authenticate. Like if you deploy RHEL in AWS or even deploy it on-prem, you can have it configured to authenticate against your AWS environment. Really, really slick stuff. So neat to see that added on. And not necessarily a feature everybody wants, but if that's a feature you need, 8.7 is a big deal. You think it'll integrate with Bob Stupchek's you know, <laughs> uh, federated services systems? That would be great. Yeah, I guess it just depends, doesn't it? I don't know. They're really uh, leaving him out. I'd have to look at the spec sheet. I feel like it's it's personal against Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I do have Microsoft Bob you back there in the Microsoft background. Bob, so. which is his first product. I don't think it has an authentication system in it, though. <laughs> yeah, just blind trust. <laughs> if you click on the icon with your name, that's good enough. It assumes. No, no one else would hey, click that icon. Why would you even be here? <laughs> So that said, you we got you know a new version of RHEL. I was also looking through it and it's talking about like how this incorporates the new Ansible Red Hat's DevOps program. Yeah, that feature stupid is dumb as hell. <laughs> <laughs> so they're trying to get a little more friendly. And then what the hell was this? This um, where is it? The Podman. I am unfamiliar with these. Apparently, I'm late to the you game. You don't know Podman? No, I do not know Podman oh, or I thought you Open were being Containers funny. Initiative. No, is that the new Marvel? Just, this like a uh, rival to Docker, apparently. <laughs> Talking. Docker came out. Docker worked. They use Docker. So uh, just to, to bring you up to speed real quick, and, and maybe for our podcast listeners, they're probably all laughing at you. Yeah, right as now. they should. Um, but uh, you know, Docker Docker was a like a Silicon Valley unicorn, whatever. Everybody thought this is amazing. It's technology. Everybody adopted it, but they didn't make any money. Yeah. And so for years and years and years, they were just hemorrhaging cash, and they had to come up with a way to make some money. And they said, okay, here's what we're going to do. The Docker container image format, that's – open source, public, anybody can make containers and, and the, the configuration files and so on, just open. But the Docker desktop environment, that's going to be licensed for now on. If you want to run the Docker desktop environment, you've got to pay for that engine to be able to run it. Uh, if you buy Windows Server Enterprise Edition, it actually comes with a Docker license so you can run Docker desktop and not pay. But if you're running Linux or Mac OS or whatever, you got to pay. And any time an open source product becomes a paid product, which they effectively did, there's going to be an alternative. And Red Hat stepped right in and, and pushed the Podman initiative. And so Podman is kind of like an open source version of Docker Desktop. So okay. when you go on a RHEL box, and, and this is actually true of a lot of Linux distros, not just Red Hat, um, and you type like Docker up, well, or, or Docker LS or whatever. It's like an alias. You're using the Docker command, but you're actually talking to Podman or Container D in the background, or both, uh, yeah, yeah. interacting with each other, and not the Docker desktop at all. You probably don't even have that installed. And so a lot of people looked at it and said, ooh, Docker's going to go out of business. And it's somewhat true. They've been struggling for cash, and they've had a bit of a rough time of it the last couple of years. Gotcha. So, I, I mean, obviously, I haven't I haven't used Red Hat, and I couldn't tell you when. Mm -hmm. So that's probably one of the reasons I had been unfamiliar. I was like, what are we talking about here? That it's incorporating the SIG store into its Podman. 
Yada yada. I'm like, I thought Docker was fine. Every time I go for something, I always have a, a Docker thing. It's always Docker. It's funny though. Like you could be using Podman and not even know it. <laughs> uh, so you, there are a lot of people who sit there and, and say like, "Well, I'm, I'm right, running because everything's you still use the Docker commands." Mm-hmm. That's why instead of saying Docker up, I'll say Podman up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Podman up, man. Yeah. Come on, Podman. <laughs> Where's your Podman Get over? <laughs> If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.